It's official, the year 2022 is out and 2023 is in. And like always, I was shocked by how fast time seems to fly and by how much can happen in just 12 months. Or as theater kids and other types of probably queer people would say, 525,600 minutes. Now, uh, that's a catchy show tune about destitution. It even inspired my friend group when we created a squad name, 525,000 Sick Hungry Crickets. Oh, most of my best friends are a biblical plague of locusts, and we're always ready to party, destroying your crops and swarming your fruit trees whenever God tells Moses to tell us. And yes, we also ripped off that song's melody for our theme song. 525,000 sick hungry crickets, they're really locusts, but I don't care. Anyway, I didn't come here just to brag about all of the bugs that live in my home. We're kicking off the new year by taking a fun look back at some of my favorite memories from the last year across different aspects of my life. My personal accomplishments, my clip breakdowns, my carefully disguised mental breakdowns. If you had to organize a group photo with half a million locusts, you would lose it too. So stay tuned or I'll command my locust army to literally f you up in this happy new year, even though I just threatened you, installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown, a year in review. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it into pieces, like um, a year breaks into months, breaks into weeks, breaks into days. And we look at each individual clip to decide if it was a highlight or a low light in the hair style of the year. Before we get into the superlatives, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see even more sort of compilation episodes like this, I'm trying something new just so that I could keep content coming out during the holiday. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down there. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm coming at you with a locust to eat your skin. It's no surprise that yearly recaps have become a social media phenomenon after Spotify's playlist wrapped really started taking the internet by storm every winter. And I even was made aware of a third party site that lets me get a similar recap for my watch history on YouTube. I don't often go back and check the views on my videos more than a day or two after it comes out. So I had no idea what videos were getting the most views that I published this year? And the answer did not surprise me. My number one top viewed video of the year was Shane Dawson's True Personality Shows on Ryland's channel. And I believe that was my first Shane Dawson video either of the year or in a long time. And you know, I stay getting a lot of mileage out of putting Shane Dawson's content on blast because the other two most watched videos this year were Shane Dawson is still cruel and gross on his new podcast. That's still true, that aged well. And then the sad problem with Shane Dawson's content in 22. I put capital words in these titles a lot, but it just feels right. I'm screaming, I'm screaming. So to compare, I'm gonna tell you my favorite clip breakdowns from 2022 in terms of how much I enjoyed making them. And even though they weren't top performers, we still got lots of eyes on them, more than usual, so I really appreciate all of you for tuning in. My clip breakdown, I'm about to cyberbully, the movie Cyberbully, was a highlight for me. I just remember having so much fun making it. I had been getting requests to cover for years, and I don't know why it took me so long, because it, uh, it was very satisfying. And it came together so quickly. Like, content like this, I don't have a hard time thinking of things to say. It was a whole mess getting that video published. I remember it was not rendering properly. I actually had to seat belt my laptop into the car to continue rendering out an export while I was driving to LA to see Lady Gaga in concert with my friends. Also, big highlights for me was this church's illegal religious Hamilton ripoff is so bad, full of youths 
with all of the, the love in their heart for the craft of singing, but not necessarily the diaphragm support. Ooh, and third, I loved uh, making Kendall Jenner's tequila brand is ruining lives. The problematic rise of celebrity liquor brands. Anyway, obviously not all of my videos are going to be as successful <laughs> as ones that use the Kardashian name. Sometimes I'll make a video on something that I think is like, this is gonna really make them gag. And then mm, less than 100,000 people watch it. I don't wanna sound ungrateful because I'm still very proud to be getting views of any significant number, but I'm always like, oh yeah, mm, I would've thought that this title was enough to get people clicking. My video when Oprah and Gail went back to colonial times and hated it. We got around 79,000 views there, which is just slightly less than what I hope to get on most videos within 30 days. To me, I thought that was like a fun walk down memory lane and it was interesting to know, oh, okay, we don't all love Oprah like that. Like I said, I'm very proud of the views that I get and beyond the views, the love and support that you all show me. Like when I did the mug can plushie and we pre-sold 300 in a month, I've been seeing lots of uh, photos going up throughout the holiday season of people receiving their mug can plushies and I'm so excited that they're making it out to people. I know I got an email saying there was a delay and I wouldn't be getting mine until January. So if you haven't gotten your plushie that you ordered yet, you might be in the same boat as me. Thank you so much for tagging me in those pictures. I'm like so amazed when like this came from my brain and now it's a thing you can softly touch. And anyway, even though that was my least popular clip breakdown, it was fun to make regardless of its reception. That being said, not every clip breakdown is equally as fun. Some are, in fact, a little difficult to get through. In some cases, the movie is just so obviously bad that it feels discouraging for me to even have to look and give it technical criticism because it's like, it's just bad, you can see it. And also my mental state during the week where I'm creating it obviously can have an impact on how much fun I'm having at work. That was the case with The Last Leprechaun is a child's St. Patrick's Day nightmare. Again, it got below average uh, viewership with 92,000 views. And I can't blame the, those of you who did not click this because look how scary that all is. Like the, the witch was scary. The leprechaun was scarier though, and that's the protagonist, like nightmare fuel. By the way, if you're one of the people who didn't check out these videos for one reason or another, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to just go and check it out. My new favorite YouTube channel for 2023. You might've seen videos already from Naomi Cannibal, who does music industry and pop culture, history and nostalgic kind of content reviews. The word choices you use just lull me into a state of relaxation, but also a lot of history like regarding how black culture and black musicians have influenced all of pop music. And they're just endlessly entertaining videos. So check out Naomi Cannibal if you haven't already. I discovered the channel when I was super sick the other week. It was not COVID thankfully, because I have the newest COVID booster, which um, I was surprised to find out a lot of people didn't even know there was a new COVID booster. The US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend that you get a single dose of this newly updated COVID booster. As long as you're at least two months out from your original vaccine sequence or two months from your most recent booster. This winter, uh, the scientists are calling it a triple threat. Between influenza, RSV, the new kid on the block, and of course COVID, we really need to protect ourselves and protect others by preventing serious illness from these diseases as much as possible. This is the first vaccine update to come out for the strain of COVID-19 that is currently circulating. We were still getting our first vaccine when Omicron jumped up. And then when the Omicron vaccine update came out, it was the Delta variant and it's like, oh my gosh. It's like trying to keep my goddamn Apple iPhone iOS updated, except it's my potentially dying of a virus. If I'm not making YouTube videos, I'm watching YouTube. I have all of the like streaming apps and stuff, but I, I pretty much only watch YouTube. I don't wanna watch a whole season of 
Ryan Murphy. No. So I love YouTube videos and I did my video recap, the one that I talked about at the beginning. I got some interesting statistics. Like the first video I watched of 2022 was from one of my favorite YouTube channels, Disney Food Blog. Now, do I go to Disney often enough to use any of these tips? No, but I'm always planning a fantasy trip in my head. So the first video I watched was what's different in Disney World this year? In terms of the video I watched the most times in total, it was like an hour long video, also from Disney Food Blog, ranking every single restaurant in Disney World's best park. Now I couldn't tell you any of those restaurants because even though I watched this video 19 times in total, which is more than I rewatched any video on YouTube, a lot of the time it's just because I love having this channel on as background noise when uh, even when I'm editing my own videos, it somehow doesn't distract me. Also, I've been tagged in other people's YouTube recap and some of you have watched a particular video of mine like three to 500 times and I'm like, wow. I can't imagine watching something 300 times because I haven't watched something more than 19. So I guess we're all different, but thank you so much for the replayability. I mean, you cannot pay for that kind of loyalty. When I get tagged in these statistics where I'm your top creator, I, cry inside with joy because it's just like so humbling. As for me this year, I watched a total of, as you see here, 6,913 videos from 1,405 different creators. The most watched ones being Disney Food Blog, followed by Watch Mojo. Also, my third most watched one was my own channel, which I would like to dispute because I did this after my 24 hour live stream of Clip Breakdown on Christmas Eve. So I don't think I would have been that high on this list. Bussy Queen, The Drag Detective are on there. Two that I really got into this year for the first time, but Spill Sesh and Defunct Land. Oh, I've been watching those channels since before any of you had seen my face for the first time. It, it makes sense that they are on the list. Also Taylor Swift Vivo, that's all my sister. When she was house sitting when I was in Mexico, she got my YouTube account into the top 2% of listeners for Taylor Swift. I was like, damn, she was really feeling that album Midnight, which she forced me to listen to once and I, I haven't listened to it again, sorry. Let's jump off the YouTube platform because I don't know if you all know, but I am multi-channel baby. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, sometimes TikTok, but not so much. Let's look at my most liked Instagram posts of 2022. First is the photo dump of me at the Lady Gaga concert that I mentioned a little bit ago. So this was the same day that I released Cyberbully. One for the books, just slightly underperforming, was this pair of photos of me in a lifeguard outfit, projecting like this, this Palm Springs resort behind me. I loved putting this outfit together. I actually put together several outfits for photo shoot I was planning. And this was just a reference photo, like a costume test basically. But when the shoot got postponed um, till the spring, I thought I'm just gonna post these. So thanks for all your likes on those posts, everybody. You made me feel like a real Instagrammer. I was surprised by my most watched TikTok with 915.9 thousand views. Almost a million views on a TikTok? That's insane. Cause my next most viewed one is like in the 20s of thousands, I think. When that TikTok popped off, I knew it was time to start covering the Twilight series on Clip Breakdown. And that's been a great joy of mine this year as well. My most popular tweet of the year, when I said, I love Panera, even though it's the food you would get in white collar prison. Thank you to the 43.5 thousand people who liked that tweet. It's the closest to viral on Twitter I've ever gone. Anyway, now let's move on from just my social media accomplishments and get into the crux of my heart. These are some year in review interview questions that I found online. I was gonna like pretend you asked me these, but no one asked me, no one asked, but I'm still gonna tell you. What is the best thing that happened to me this year? Um, definitely adopting, but first fostering my little Pomeranian toast. I gotta be honest, there have been a lot of personal challenges in raising an adopted dog with a neglectful background because she's nervous and anxious about pretty much everything, but I can relate. I've had to, and I'm so grateful that I get to give Toast a better life after spending seven and a half years living outside 
in an animal hoarding situation with 57 other dogs, also Pomeranians. Taking care of Toast has not only made my home life so much more fun and less lonely because she's so cute, but also I'm learning a sense of responsibility that I didn't have before and wasn't gonna get from having kids because that's not part of my life plan. So although Toast does challenge me sometimes to uh, make sure I'm home early enough to feed her, taking her to the best vets and trainers that I can find, I love um, the responsibility of taking care of not just another living creature, but such an adorable and beautiful and um, special creature as my dog Toast who melts my heart and quickly became part of the family. And although she's still very anxious and may always be, I've seen her improve and become more confident in many subtle ways. What advice would you give your last year self? I would say advice I would give myself looking back on the past year was just be more vigilant about keeping some structure in your days and your weeks because um, it's definitely, been a challenge at certain points. Like I've had some um, minor surgeries this year and health issues that have kept me from always feeling the most productive that I can. But then there are things like checking emails and responding to emails and making sure that my agent and uh, my amazing editors who helped me get cuts done quickly enough for um, two episodes a week. You know, like I wanna be really communicative and professional with with everybody and sometimes I just am stressed out by how many emails I get and I procrastinate and I don't respond to them. I wanna be better about finding the things that I can do five days a week that even if I'm not creatively inspired to sit and record a video, I wanna be able to get stuff done. You know, I, it means so much to me that people are waiting eagerly to see what I have to say next and I always wanna be there with new content to watch. What did you do this year for your physical and mental health? I've made a really great habit, or I've gotten more intuitive about deep belly breathing. It was years ago that my therapist, who worked in breath work a lot, pointed out that my, my breaths were very short. And when I was talking about things that stressed me out, and like if I was getting in an uncomfortable confrontation at work, holding my breath, like I didn't even wanna take in the atmosphere that was causing me stress and that doesn't help, obviously. So I've really learned about breathing into the lower belly so that it stretches these ribs out because your lower ribs have stretch receptors that cue your parasympathetic nervous system to relax. And when I got in the habit, I've noticed like I feel less uh, stressed, I'm, I'm sweating a lot less, I'm losing things less frequently, and I have better focus. What did you do for your career growth? Love that question, because I love being a business owner. And up until recently, I was just doing business as an individual, a sole proprietor, which after meeting my financial advisor on a cruise this year, I got, such amazing advice on how to future-proof the business side of what I do here on Clip Breakdown. And now I'm putting away money for my retirement and I incorporated to Nick Doremio Productions, which is crazy, I'm a CEO. And my uh, advisor has helped reference me out to other locals in Palm Springs for things like payroll and um, taxes and all of this business stuff. So I love being able to work with smart, talented, queer locals to my community who are helping me also feel like, okay, I mean, you can't guarantee with self-employment anything about the longevity of your career, but it makes me feel good to know that right now I am thinking ahead and putting money away for an eventual retirement. In my 60s, I suppose. If I'm still making YouTube videos like this when I'm 60, will you still like me? <laughs> and you can't change your answer. You have to commit to watching all of these videos until the day you or I die. And then you have to keep watching them in hell, you son of a bitch. How is that a good way to get you to commit to a lifetime of me? So anyway, truly adulting. I have a business credit card. 
What do you have? Kids and a loving partner? Ugh, that's me as gay Ebenezer Scrooge. Actually, I think original Ebenezer Scrooge was gay. He didn't, he didn't marry that nice woman from the flashback. That's gay. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much to my team, not just on the business side, specifically Kerry, uh, who is uh, along with his partner, Eric, such a dear friend to me now and a trusted advisor, but also shout out to Jeremy who helps edit most of these videos before I do my final cut and put a little Nick twist on it. So grateful for Jeremy's help and also big shout out to my agent, Michael and uh, his lovely team at Boss Management. I also get so much joy out of working with Jared at um, my channel network. And of course, the wonderful artists who I've been working with to create these merch designs that have become some of my favorite things to wear. I swear, I, I show these pins, I keep these in my fanny pack so I can show people like, Oh, did you know I have hard goods? Stay tuned for some really cool new merch designs in 2023. I feel so blessed to be working as a full-time content creator and even more blessed to be able to work in tandem with other talented creative people or professionals who know what they're doing so that I can invest in my own brand. I, I got to meet a lot of television viewers, you know, subscribers to the channel. I get the pleasure of being recognized and people saying hi. That always flatters me. Like my family, I, I went to New Hampshire and um, at least once every member of my family saw me get to interact with somebody who knew me from YouTube and that was like, oh yeah. See mom, I am Z-list niche gay famous and that, you, know, you can take that to the bank. No, I don't, I didn't need to prove anything to them. My parents and my sisters, they see the love and support that you all show my videos and they're as grateful for you being here and letting me do what I love to do as much as I am. No, not as much, but they also, they care about you all equally. I'm not saying they're as funny as me. I said they, I said they think you're cool too. Anyway, <laughs> can't just compliment a person. So yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up for 2022. There was a lot of a great, accomplishments. I got to meet and interact with so many of you. I gotten great feedback from you, but most importantly, it's like I learned a lot that I get to take with me into 2023 and just hopefully keep producing content that's harder, better, faster, stronger, and more consistent. Sorry to my sponsors and to my agent who always has to tell them that their ad is gonna be published late. Thank you all so much again. I can't say it enough for watching this video, but also just watching my channel and showing me the support that you do, whether it's just here on YouTube or you're a member of the Patreon community. It is all far more than I could ever directly ask someone to do and expect, you know, I don't feel entitled to any of those actions or engagement. And I, so I, I really feel grateful for all of you taking the time to watch. Thank you. <laughs> you're all the best. I hope your 2022 has been full of amazing memories and accomplishments just like mine. And if so, answer your favorite questions from this list in the comments below. I would love to celebrate your accomplishments as well. And then give this video a big thumbs up if you want me to add more content to the About Nick Doremio playlist where I tell you about Nick Doremio. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know. Anyway, I hope you're all having an amazing beginning of your new year and uh, that it just keeps getting better. You're all the greatest. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. A slurp.